Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. Today we are going over the new clean beauty brand, which is called Say Beauty. I have all of their products here to test out and share my thoughts with you guys. They did just recently, like very recently, launch this super glowy gel along with some dew balms, which I'm so excited to share with you guys. So if you want to know my thoughts on this very new brand then keep watching before we start don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i would love for you to join me and if you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up let's try to give this video 100 likes if we can get to that thank you guys but let's get into the video all right so let's go ahead and get started the first new product i have here is the say it's called their glowy super gel in the shade star glow which i believe is the only shade they have at the moment but in the description it said that it will work for all skin tone and types this is a water-based formula so it also said that it will work with most foundations but of course if anything is oil-based like the kosas tinted face oil it might not be compatible with that because this is a really like water-based formula and of course the kosas tinted face oil is oil-based. So I think the goal with these new products was glowy products but not super metallic or shimmery in the description of both of them. They said they just wanted to make this way more natural looking so you could wear it on its own and it's not going to look like you have like a highlighting product on your face which I really appreciate. I'm definitely leaning more towards like natural glowy products nowadays. So I'm gonna use this under my foundation. I just did a couple pumps and you can tell right away it's definitely very water-based. It feels thin and it is like a lotion but it's almost leans towards a gel. I mean it is called a gel. It feels really like slippery on the skin which I like. That looks really pretty so far. I really like the texture of this. It's almost like a if like an oil and gel had a hybrid but without that like heaviness of an oil, really interesting. Looking at my skin close up, it looks so natural. Like I really can't tell that there's any sort of pearl to the lotion. It, it kind of reminds me of the first A Beauty, the Coconut Smoothie Priming Moisturizer but almost like taken down a notch because that one's a little visible on the skin. And this one kind of just looks like my natural skin which I really appreciate. It does seem pretty translucent as well. I could see it probably working for all skin tones. Obviously I'm very fair so I can't really like it's really hard to tell if this would show up light on a deeper skin tone. It does start out very champagne-y but it's almost immediately turns in just to a clear lotion with that pearl. I think it might work because it's so sheer. Again, I'm not sure though. I wanted to go with a very natural looking base to see if this would sort of shine through the foundation. I wanted to break out the Ilia True Skin because I feel like I haven't like used this in a while and of course you guys know I love this foundation. I've just been using my Bite Beauty one so much but this one we will give a go. It's the shade SF2 by the way. Speaking of Ilia, they did just rebrand like their packaging is a little bit different. Instead of having like silver, it's actually like white and I think the font is also white. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm really excited to use this foundation again because I think it's one of those where I loved it so much but I've just been using other stuff. It's kind of on the back burner. I'm gonna start with a brush. This color might be a little bit dark. It usually blends in pretty well though. I just like to go in with my sponge to press everything in. I always like to do this technique with thinner type foundations or just lighter coverage foundations is apply it with a brush so you get the most out of it and then press it in with the sponge so the sponge doesn't like immediately absorb it. So far the glowy gel I think is working really well with this foundation. In my mind the formulas were really similar so I kind of wanted to pair them. I think you can see the glow through this foundation a little bit because I don't necessarily think it's this glowy on its own. Maybe we'll see with the second layer if I can still tell that it's adding a glow to my skin. I'm just going to use a sponge for my second layer. The next video that will be up after this, I believe on Tuesday, is the launch day for Kosas's new product and I actually am working with them on the video to review it for you guys. So I've actually been able to test it out before it was released so I can really get a good opinion and be able to share you, share you, to be able to share my thoughts with you guys, which I'm just so grateful for because I love being able to give you guys a review like right when a product comes out so you know 
if it's worth it or not so you don't you know just go ahead and buy it immediately if it's not something that's gonna work for you so I'm just so freaking excited for that video can't say anything yet but we'll see so exciting just love this foundation it looks so freaking pretty this was like my first clean foundation love and it will always be i'm going to use the Ilia true skin serum concealer in the shade arrowroot and with this concealer i've mentioned this before i like to let it sit on my skin because i just find like you get a lot more coverage out of it that way while we let that sit i want to bronze with the physician formula sculpting bronzer in the shade toffee because again i want to keep this look like very cream based product what i want to keep this look very cream product based because i haven't I feel like i haven't really done a look like that in a while and my skin's been feeling a little bit dry so i wanted to do very like glowy dewy natural vibe blending that in with a luxie small contouring this bronzer seriously blends out like a dream like i feel like you can't even get it to look patchy even if you tried i'd love to see even more shades of this they have two shades but i think it would be nice to see it expanded to like even deeper tones and then maybe some like cooler tones for contouring because I think this formula is really beautiful. It's also not too pigmented, which I appreciate. I think that sort of adds to the blendability of it. As you can tell, it just always looks really natural, even when you use a little bit too much. A little bit on my chinny chin chin. Now I'm going to blend in the concealer. I feel like I've been having so many video ideas lately, but I just don't know which ones to do first. So always feel free to comment below any video ideas because it usually it helps me along in the creative process of picking out what videos to do. Before I set my face, I'm going to go in with the next Say product I have here to discuss with you guys. This is called their Dew Balm. It comes in three different shades. I will swatch them for you guys. This is, again, the same sort of concept, like a less metallic, just more really natural looking highlighting balm. They're pretty thick when you squeeze them out of the tube. This is the shade Rosy Gold. So that is the shade Rosy Gold. I'm actually surprised this isn't like too deep on my skin. I really appreciate that because sometimes it's hard to find a highlighter that's actually light enough, but we'll see if any of these would be like deep enough for deep skin. They seem pretty translucent. What is this shade? This is... This is Say Lilac. That's what I'm really excited about. I love like cooler tone highlights. Ooh, that's pretty. This one has like a purpley pink shift to it. I think I might use that one. And the last shade is Bronze Nectar. They're like really hard to squeeze out of the tube at first. They're just like such a thick formula. There's Bronze Nectar. Let's blend that out. Okay, so that one's obviously a lot deeper. So that would work for medium to deeper skin tones, but hmm. These are also so translucent. I feel like really they're anybody could use them because at first that was pigmented, but now that it's blended out, it's kind of just like almost a clear glow with a slight bronze shift to it. I'm going to use the shade Say Lilac, the purpley pink one. I'm not sure how they recommend you apply this. I think I'm going to use my fingers because with oily, balmy products like this, I think it's usually the best way to go. So I'm just grabbing some on my finger. And I'm gonna tap this on my cheekbones and see what happens. It's definitely very natural so far, but it does add a sheen. It's hard to tell if it's picking up my foundation. Yeah, it kind of is because it's oil-based. Try to use a sponge. I think the sponge works a lot better because instead of your finger sort of pressing and picking up the foundation, the sponge sort of just lays it on top, if that makes sense. Very, very subtle, but pretty because it doesn't look like a highlighter. It just looks like you're glowy. So if that's your vibe, I think you would really enjoy these type of products. I don't mind a dramatic highlight now and then, but usually on the day to day, I like something more natural, especially since I have texture, usually like the worst on that part of my cheek, and it could just really accentuate that. So I do appreciate a natural highlight. I really do. 
I like Forrest Gump. I don't know. All right, so there's that. You can definitely tell it has a little bit of a purpley, pinky shift to it. I feel like it did remove a little bit of my foundation, but that's kind of expected with an oily, dewy balm highlight. For my blush, I'm going in with the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Puff. Because it's really pretty, true pink. I'm just going to use this brush to stipple it on. I think this shade is really close to my natural flush, but a little bit more cool toned. I think it's really pretty. Let's go ahead and set with the Well People Bio Brightener Invisible Powder under my eyes and rest of my face too. I'm going to leave that glowy part of my face unpowdered just so the highlight can shine through. Alrighty. The skin looks super uber natural at this moment, a little bit less coverage than I prefer. So I'm going to go in with the Alima Pure Satin Matte Pressed Foundation. I always look at the back, but it's blank. Oops. Uh, this is the shade Ginger. Clearly I need a new one. This is like a really warm tone powder, but I've mentioned this before in, I don't even know what video. But I like to go in with a warm tone powder or really just like get warm tone foundations because I have a lot of redness and pinkness in my skin. Like I am naturally like neutral cool toned, but because I have a lot of redness, I feel like when I put on like pink tone foundations, it just accentuates that and makes my face look sickly almost. So I always go in with warm tone products, even though it's not like traditionally what I should pick according to shade matching. I feel like we lost everything I just did at the face because I had to put more coverage on. Maybe next time with the highlighters I would put it over a full coverage foundation so you don't have to do that because I do feel like I just like totally <laughs> planked everything out again. I'm going to rebronze my face up with the Hourglass Nude Bronze Light Bronzer which is just my go-to bronzer at the moment. Going to put another one of these dew balms over my powder, even though I'm pretty sure it's gonna look bad, just to see. I'm gonna use the rose gold shade. I'm gonna try using my sponge, maybe for the best result with this. Did that do anything? Oh, it actually didn't pick up too bad with the sponge. I feel like the champagne shade is a little bit dark. I'm pretty surprised it didn't pick up the powder. If you use your finger, it probably would. But if you go in gently with the sponge, it's not seeming to cause any problems. I'm going to do just a little bit more of the Glossier Cloud Paint blush. <laughs> what kind of face is that? I don't know. Okay. Don't use a brush with that. The skin so far with the Say Glow products. My nose looks really cakey, but that's definitely because of the powder foundation I put on top, not because of the glow products. So far, I do think this added a really nice glow to the skin, and I think the Elia foundation was sheer enough that it did shine through. And then the Dew Balms, they're not very pearlescent, which I think is actually the point of them. So if you want a really pearlescent metallic reflective highlight, like this isn't it. But if you want something super natural, I think it looks really pretty on the skin. And most of them, I would say these are like tinted shades almost. They're basically all translucent with a little bit, like just the pearl shift is different. So this one's obviously purpley and then there's the rose gold one and the champagne. So this brand doesn't have a ton of products. They only have these and the glow products so far. This, mm, this is the Say Brow Butter in the shade Medium Brown, which first off probably isn't the shade for me. Very, very brown, almost has a purplish tint to it. This product I really don't get. It's called a brow butter, so it's supposed to be like a butter for your brows and not really like a strong hold gel or anything. This, <laughs> It just doesn't do anything like it just adds this I will show you it does do something but I think the effect is just so minimal and kind of weird because it's a butter I feel like it's not long wearing and almost takes off like if you had a brow pencil I feel like oh my god I've used it with a brow pencil and I feel like it kind of removes that as you can tell, if you really wanted a super natural, like glossy looking brow almost, I think this is 
it's an interesting product. It's not necessarily something I would really use again. But as you can tell, it just tinted my brow hairs a little bit darker and defined them. I'm not really that mad at it, but I don't think it's worth it because it doesn't do anything like crazy, you know? Not that a product has to do something crazy, but it doesn't provide enough of an effect for me to think it's worth it. That's a better way of putting it. Should I even do my brows? Do you ever just feel like not doing your brows? Mm, probably shouldn't. All right, I'm gonna do my brows and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I did my eyes as well, clearly using the Aether Beauty Summer Solstice palette because I'm actually filming something, filming a stories takeover for them over on their Instagram. So I use that palette. Now let's test out the mascara from Say, which I have right here. I have tried this once before in a video and I remember I really liked the effect of it. I don't remember how it wore, so I am gonna put this on and wear it. And I'll probably write in the description box how it ended up holding up. So check down there. I did already curl my lashes, by the way. This has like a one of those uh, plasticky brushes, but it has like that round bristle at the top. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I really do like brushes like these because I feel like they really grab your lashes and help to separate and lengthen. This mascara with one coat. Pore Clean Mascara I think is actually really pretty. Give drama without having to build it up a ton, which I feel like is the case with a lot of clean mascaras, is the effect is just really natural. And for me, I like a dramatic lash, so it's just like layering and layering and layering. Sometimes it gets clumpy or doesn't even layer up to be that dramatic. That's actually really nice with two coats. I like the tip of this because you can go in and like pick up those inner lashes that are if you try to get them with a brush, that's how you get mascara all over your nose. So I like that part of it. And I got mascara on my nose anyway. Okay, so there's about two coats on each eye. I like how this builds up really nicely. Like how my lashes look now, I feel like is enough, which I usually can't find in a clean, like very clean mascara. The Bare Minerals one I like, but I don't know. Anyway, this, yeah, really pretty. I am noticing it's getting a, like, it's not getting clumpy. I don't think it looks clumpy right now, but I can tell if I were to put on another layer, it would start to get really clumpy. It's more of just like the base that's getting clumpy. I'm not really getting those like, you know how you get little like balls almost of mascara at the tip of your lashes. I'm not getting that, which I think is nice. The bottom lashes, it went on nicely. So far, I really like the effect. I am gonna have to wear this and see how it wears though because I really don't remember how it wore the last time I wore it. I just went ahead and put on the By Beauty Kava Lip Crayon to go with the purpliness in the eye. Very fall look. I don't know what inspired this, it kinda just happened. But let's wrap up my thoughts on Say Beauty. Say beauty, you are a beauty. I will link everything I used for my face today down below. If you're wondering about any product I used, I'll link brows and everything down there. So don't forget to check down there. Sounded a little weird. Okay, so starting with the Say Super Glowy Gel. Glowy Super Gel, excuse me. Um, I'm just kidding. I really enjoy this. I love the texture of it. It's this watery gel, but also feels really moisturizing because it's water-based, but I believe it also has rosehip oil in it, so it feels really moisturizing without feeling heavy, which I really enjoy, especially for something under makeup. I do have combo skin, so right now my skin's on a little bit of the drier side. I have been using salicylic acid and stuff, so it's a little dry, and I think this went on nicely. It didn't accentuate my dry patches or my texture either because I think like the actual shimmer content is so low that it doesn't accentuate any sort of stuff on your face you wouldn't want highlighted. So I really, really appreciate that about this product. And I think this was probably the standout product out of all of them I tried. I think it's the only one that's sort of more unique to Clean Beauty. I haven't seen like a glowy base like this besides the Elia Liquid Light, but that's more of a liquid highlighter and not really formulated to be a base, although you can mix it with other products. So Really enjoy this one, and I think that would be my number one recommendation from the brand. Moving on to the dew balms, I think these are nice. I like how the, again, pigment and like metallicness of it or the pearlescence of it is very soft, so it's super natural looking. Not something I gravitate towards. I don't really like dewy, balmy highlights because I do wear a powder and I feel like they're hard to incorporate. In my routine, with that being said, I think these applied pretty decently over powder with a sponge. 
I'll have to continue using these and kind of see my thoughts on them but they don't excite me that much. Again, I feel like it's something I've seen in Clean Beauty before, just these dewy, balmy type of highlights. I would have loved to see a powder highlight. I would be way more excited about that. But if you do like a really natural looking glow, maybe give these a shot. The brow butter, I definitely think this is a pass for me. The shade actually worked out fine for me. It just, I feel like, like I mentioned before, it doesn't provide enough of a difference to my brows for me to recommend it to you guys and say it's worth it. I'd rather just do a brow pencil and a brow gel. Also with that being said, I feel like it almost kind of laid down a nice base for like brow powder. That's what I did today because it is more oily. The powder really stuck to it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I honestly just think that's such a specific thing like just get a brow gel, pass on that. Not really my favorite thing I've ever tried. Lastly, the mascara. I really do love the effect that this mascara gives. If it wears well, it would probably be one of the favorite clean mascaras I've tried. I will have to wear it and see and tell you guys if it smudges or anything or flakes. I will put that in the description box below after I wear it for the rest of the day. But I would recommend this if it doesn't smudge or flake. If it doesn't, if it does, I wouldn't because no one really wants that in a mascara. But the effect is really beautiful. And it's not a super voluminizing mascara, which personally I like. It's more of, it does thicken your lashes, but it's really focused on length. So yeah, that was about it. All right, guys, that wraps up my thoughts on Say Beauty. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments what product you'd be interested in trying from this brand. I'd love to hear like what you're most interested in. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. But thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.